Hello! Welcome to episode 142 of We Have Issues. I'm Anthony. And I am Stevie Wildcard. And every week, Stevie Wildcard and I get together and we do our best to take all of our issues and, um... You know what? We just don't we don't go to wherever they are. We just skip school of our issues. We just like abandon our <laughs> issues like Ferris Bueller's Day Off. We we do our best to have the best day possible and live it up and take our friends on wild journeys. And it, it, we, we live up our best lives. While our Some, issues... Sometimes we borrow our issues car and just oh, absolutely. We what we do is we borrow it and like put too many miles on it, and then our issues actually kick it, and it just drives in reverse, and then the issues parents just get really <laughs> upset. Steven, I love I love this like mixed metaphor we have going on. <laughs> okay, okay, I was gonna okay, we'll get <clears throat> we're gonna get into Ferris Bueller later because like I have some things and like all right, we'll talk about that. But every week, Steve Wildcard and I get together and we do our best to overcome our various issues and obstacles, and we get something done. Most recently, we've been working on a supernatural action comedy book called Deathless, and it's going pretty well so far. We're on issue two. For those of you who don't know, Stephen, what did you want to do this week, and how did you do? I wanted to get a page done, but I did not. I got I got it like 100% roughed, and I've started panel one, but I was out of town this weekend, so I failed. I failed, good sir. I'm just crying inside. <laughs> I'm dying inside, Stephen. I don't it's, know. Like, I know. And I get why. Because, like, it's like a double burn. Because, like, I know you wanted to be where I went this weekend, too. And, that's like, true. not only did I not do a page, but, like, you wanted to be where I was. And was I want to be where bad the boy is. <laughs> I want to see, want to see Coheed and Cambria. Uh, <laughs> so, no, uh, but yeah, th- uh, this week I wanted to uh, color at least one page and get, I had a lot of stuff to do this week, actually, because like I was getting over uh, the sickness and mm. getting, you know, trying to get past that. And like, I had a lot to catch up on. Um, I had some Critically Stupid stuff. If you haven't checked out Critically Stupid, it's a D&D podcast that I'm fortunate enough to be, not be killed off of yet. Um, but go check that out. I had to write a song for like a recap song this week. And it was kind of plaguing me because it was like a lot going on. Like, you know like i write these recap songs for the D- the dnd podcast and i i have to put all of like these like little plot things into the song but i also have to do it under like a minute and a half you know what i mean like i try to i have to condense it and it's really hard to be and like- if you really if you really think about like storytelling songs right like like even like in coheed like when coheed has a moment that they're explaining in a story in the story in a song it's yeah. literally like probably like 1 second in the story you know what i'm yeah. saying this entire song is basically not even telling story but yeah. defining an emotion a, a character a, is feeling a, one you know what i'm saying yeah. and you're over here have you're over here having to describe multiple characters like yeah. it's, situations it's, a, it's a, a few hours of playing with like a bunch of like just convoluted mess of a story that's happening and like i can't, i'm not going to spoil anything but like the, the song that I had to write was especially ridiculous. You'll see um, this Friday. Go check uh, out uh, YouTube.com slash at Crit Stupid. And you'll see my first ever music video for at, for Crit Stupid. Oh, Crit that's Stupid. exciting. Um, yeah. And, and you'll see the kind of thing that I had to do. Anyway, so I was I did that. And I, I was su- totally successful at that. I finished the page that I was trying to color. I still have a lot to color, though. Like, you are still ahead of me by like two. Which pages. is. That's good then, because like you know, I'm not falling behind fully. You know, no, it's like great. I'm, it's, I'm yeah, keeping no, good pace. Basically. Yeah, we have really good pace, and like I mean, thankfully, dude, like the flatting is like super intense, and like the 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 panel, like the pencil and ink work that you're doing is super intense. So it's just like um, once we get through this, and we're we're making really good timing. And once we get through this, we're gonna we're gonna letter it like nobody's business. You're gonna shade it like nobody's business, and it'll be done. So yeah. you know, I think it'll be great. Um. So you totally failed this week, like completely just screwed up our whole situation. Uh, <laughs> you threw us off course, like our, our train derailed. Um, but so for those of you who don't know, every week we talk about a little bit about a comic book, what we did, which we, we just got over it. That's it. That's it. We, 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 that's, that's it. We just put the pin in that. We'll talk about the comic book stuff a little bit later. But for now, Stephen, life got in the way, huh? Every week, like, something <laughs> happens. We talk about our lives a bit. Um, so what would you, what did you actually do this week? Like what? So a few months ago, I found out that Coheed and Cambria was not coming to Florida, at least not for the never under. So Coheed and Cambria does this thing called the never under where they pick an album and they play it start to finish. They're typically awesome shows for like Coheed fans, diehard Coheed fans. This particular never under, we actually had, t- sadly enough, we actually had tickets to go see with you and Mike. Um, you don't from, say. Yeah. <laughs> you don't say. Two years ago, but then the pandemic hit and the, yeah. they then they released a new album. So then they yep. toured the new album, you know, all that happened. So anyways, it's the No World for Tomorrow. <sighs> they weren't coming to Florida. Breaking my heart. 
I did. I did the. I made a big boy decision back in February. I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna get a Delta Sky Miles card, and I already paid it off. But I'm gonna get some plane tickets, and we're gonna fly to Atlanta, and we're gonna go see Kobe. This is gonna be crazy. <laughs> so we flew to Atlanta. Atlanta, by the way, actual travel time on the plane is only like an hour from where we live in Florida. Yeah, it's a. Te- it's about a ten hour drive, but it's only an hour flight time. We literally spent more time in security and waiting for the plane than we did being on the plane. But we landed in Atlanta. We Uber every we Uber to the hotel, and we're literally in the heart of like the new like the revamp district and our concert venue. I can literally see like in between the buildings from my hotel. So like everything was walking distance. We didn't have to go anywhere once we were there. We just walked, and it was really awesome. And then we went and saw Coheed at the Tabernacle, which is like probably my favorite place I've ever seen them. Yeah. The energy was extremely high. Right. Um, but yeah. It was awesome. All that was great. But then since I bought four tickets just in case you could come or Mm -hmm. my sister could come or somebody could make it work. So I had two spare tickets and we have a very close friend of the podcast that lives near ATL. And that would be Daniel from Don't Make It Weird. So I, Stephen Todd, got to meet Daniel and our first like friend date together is Coheed and Cambria, which is pretty epic. Like that's a pretty epic like core oh, memory so cool. no no it's, it's great steven i was also there as evidenced <laughs> by this picture of all of us <laughs> <laughs> and even coheed was in that picture yeah, it was crazy picture. dino was in the background <laughs> it was an awesome picture <laughs> no it's amazing though it's really cool you got to meet daniel though i'm jealous so, oh it was awesome he bought me a beer like we were having a good time got to meet his friend kevin awesome. i believe his name was but uh for those of you who don't know uh daniel is on the don't make it weird podcast which we've been on several times now go check out you know our at least go check out you know our appearances on the show it's it, it's a lot of fun it's always been great uh they make us say terrible terrible things and we say them oh just enthusiastically because yeah, anthony and i we like very seldom swear and like we very seldom get sex- sexual kids like you know and wait wait wait, did- wait 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 what did you just say oh we <laughs> Wait, wait, Steven, we very listen to what now? <laughs> listen, I called our audience kids, like, you know, like, like the old, I, I didn't mean wait, wait, like children. Oh, oh, hang hang on, we live in Florida. On. We live in Florida, too. Like, I'm at hang risk on, here. Hang on, Steven, <laughs> of all times to try out a new thing, like, to be like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to put this, I'm going to workshop calling our audience. <laughs> it came after the words sexual <laughs> immediately too like all was se- all that was separating sexual and kids was in that a, sense oh a cop a comma it was which is comma was doing the most heavy lifting of any <laughs> comma and it was an audio comma steven you can't rely on the people's comma ears like <laughs> oh that was too good anyway i'm sorry so yeah um the sexual children <laughs> <laughs> well, this this video is gonna get flagged and it's not even gonna be like for like any reason it was literally just my, my favorite thing is that this is also piggybacking <laughs> on you saying that we don't curse a lot and we don't often get very and, and here's the most true. heinous thing you can you can put but, next to you but yes they, there's a segment on don't make it weird <laughs> called cringy copulations and boy do they always find like the feistiest ones for us i swear to god so while you were doing that as much as i wanted to be there i couldn't you know, i couldn't of course <sighs> but my lives you know it's been going really well uh atlas has you know been feeling better i'm feeling better i still have a little bit of like a tickle it's been a, it's it's been a, a slow going you know like but I, I like being on the mend you know like i like when you feel like okay I, I, it's all it's it's getting better you know it's it's all downhill up here it's definitely downhill everything's getting it's weird when you say it's all going downhill because mm-hmm. it's like it's easier as it goes downhill but down is also you know it's associated for some, with for some you know but like living in florida we're at sea level baby so like right? what like why would we want to be up there like that's yeah, I don't scary be, I, i'm not going I'm not there was there. literally when we were I'm when tina and, I, and I were walking around downtown atlanta mm-hmm. And I turned and there was a road that literally went uphill. I'm like, yeah, we're not gonna go down that road. We're gonna stay on the we're gonna stay on the flat road. We're staying right here. This is this is you still this like, is oh, this is Florida right here. That <laughs> that that is scary, whatever that is. But yeah, everything's been going well. Um, you know, I worked on comic book stuff, worked on, you know, uh critically stupid stuff. And then otherwise, I've just been spending a lot of time like talking to this person you know this crush that i have steven i let it happen this is i i i I was blindsided by feeling steven what's happening to me who am i but 
that it's that I'll tell you who did is that damn Sasquatch. But but you obviously sh- she's amazing. She's c- so cool. Like so so that's all all I've been doing is like hanging out with 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 my crush. It's been Stephen. We've been talking every day for almost two months now, and it's going really well. We you know like video back and forth, and you know like we watch movies together all the time. We just watched um oh my gosh Stephen. We just watched a movie called Night of the Demons Two, which I've never seen. Oh my gosh, Steven, like I, I like it's one of those things where it's like a Jason takes Manhattan situation where it's like just like over so, the top cheese. Oh, oh my gosh, so much over the top cheese. Like it starts, it's it's ridiculous. It's, it's like the first half of the movie is like, eh, who, why is this even a movie? This doesn't have to exist. The second half of the movie is full of like practical effects, weird like death scenes and demons and monsters and funny like situations. There's a guy playing basketball with his own head. He's dribbling his own decapitated head and it's all like silly practical effects. And there's, there's, there's one scene, Steven, and I can't, you can't explain it. There's no explanation for this. <laughs> there's no, there's no, I've tried. I literally said while we were watching it, I, I, I text, you know, my crush. And I was like, when this movie is over, we have to rewatch this scene because I don't know what just happened. Like I watched it. I didn't take my eyes off the screen and I still don't understand it. You know, it was one of those. And this is what happened. You don't need context for this because there's, it, it won't matter, Stephen. This is what happens though. There's, <laughs> there's a demon lady and there's a nun, right? Uh, for all intents and purposes, I'm going to call her a nunja because she's a, she's, she's, she's a nunja. She's attacking this demon with the, like her nun fists and like doing nunja. her best karate moves. She's a nunja. Um, so the nunja versus the Angela, the demon. And, you know, the nun just stands there and Angela swings, you know, this uh, sword or whatever and chops off the nun's head. Now, here's the thing. You see the helmet, like like you see the hood part of her, her habit go, Fwah! her whole head comes off, Fwah! just bah, and she gets decapitated like like pff, none is no more she's none you know like she's, she's none your business she's because she's gone like that's it she's gone yeah yeah um like previously in the nun's life i'm alive like the next time in the nun's life nope not so much not someone not so much me I'm gone uh, three seconds later they show the nun's body on the ground and she inexplicably does a thing where much like a turtle poking its head <laughs> out of its shell oh, just goodness. magically regenerates a head and goes boop and she says something along the lines of that was a close shave and she's wearing like the habit like hood and everything she's like ha you almost got me she's like close but no cigar i'm like i saw your head come off <laughs> like, it flew I, off it you flew were off. dead you were dead like had they had they hidden it had they had her like duck and then like made it so she did like duck into her habit somehow like it is a turtle shot fine it's a turtle shot no like, she was like this She's literally yeah, like <laughs> neck out, you know, like like oh my god, the like the demon made a Pez dispenser out of her, you know, like just go like. Here's what? the thing, human shoulders. <laughs> I mean, if if she chopped here, okay, you physically, you, you can't. You can't. You would I mean, you would just you would just be ducking it at that point, and it'd be very clear that you ducked <laughs> the blow. That's all it would be. Like there's no I I love that. Like I do imagine though, like being like, how did that happen? The director's just like it's none of your business. Yes. <laughs> like it's he has that line like ready. Like he's it's just ready. Go. Like, that's a, but but like anyway, that so we watched this movie together and like stuff like that happened. You should watch it. If you're interested in like horror or horror comedy, it's totally worth watching. So funny, ridiculous, like like practical effects. It's from 1994 and it feels like it's from 1984. It's real weird. Like it's it's real weird. That's funny. But yeah, dude. Um, so I've had a couple of people on on Twitter, uh J- Jess and uh Queen Emberlyn, uh, you know, wanted to, an update on that. And I'll tell you, um, it's going really well. It's going surprisingly well. I'm, 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 I'm trying to overcome my, 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 my very reasonable, but kind of like overwhelming fears of, uh, you know, these sort of things like, you know, going wrong, you know, or like, you know, I, like, I, 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 I don't want to, I, I've, I've talked to her. I've like, I've talked to her about it. I, I've like, I've completely like unburdened myself and totally burdened her with like my own like fears and insecurities. I'm like, what if, what if you're a robot? What if you're a murdery murderer? <laughs> what if, what if, and then like, I even got to the point where I was like, look, what if you don't like me? It can happen. Like there are things like, you know, like what if it's weird? Like n- n- my fear has always been um, meeting someone at a distance 
uh, having like a connection verbally or like through text. But then when you meet, it's different. The timing's different. Maybe they're, maybe you don't like compliment one another in, in, in a, a way that works or like harmonize, like, you know, like conversationally, you know, like you don't always like gel with everyone in person, you know, and like it could be mm-hmm. different, you know? Um, so I was afraid that maybe like that would happen or there wouldn't be like a mutual attraction. So then there's naturally just like this, like, awkwardness that happens where it's like ooh, had we met immediately we would have known like ah this is more like a friend zone situation but since we're, we're, we don't have that immediate you know interaction now we're kind of left to the devices of like ambiguity and like the distance and you know and all that stuff so i, I like I, i'm trying to overcome those things i talked to her about it and i feel a lot better um you know she's been really cool about it and she's really um just open with like you know like sending videos and like you know being like hey like whatever makes you comfortable and like you know we're, we, we've been going back and forth but so far it's been going really well it's been a, a, almost two months um and we've been talking about uh how we're going to meet each other and you know like we're trying we're getting to that place where we're like what makes the most sense am i going to go to you or are you going to me are we going to meet in the middle like what are we going to do um but it's it's been great so far you know so i that's so awesome maybe maybe you guys do that thing that people like not implying the the this but like you know how when people are gonna hook up for the first time they like make sure that they're like inebriated maybe instead of like that far but like maybe you just maybe you both like get inebriated before you even meet so that way you're already like in a weird jolly mood you're just like hey it's you man okay listen we have to take six shots each spin around three times and hope we see each other otherwise let's just see what happens we'll go to the same place spin around you both just end up like hooking up with two different people (laughs) like because you think it's the other person because you're so wasted (laughs) anthony yep that's me yeah that's me i guess i mean yeah i mean if i was that if if i were that guy i would i would probably do that too no i wouldn't i would not (laughs) lie and pretend on me um Although, Steven, someone today said I look like Johnny Knoxville. Do I look like Johnny Knoxville? Do you see it? Like, I, is it just, like, hair? It's literally, It's literally just, like, maybe face shape and, like, dark hair. Okay. Your I, eyes, I feel like Johnny Knoxville's most noticeable trait to me, anyway, is his eyes. And, like, you definitely don't have Johnny Knoxville's eyes. Like, I your eyes. I, I think that's my problem, too, is, like, I don't want to insult Johnny Knoxville. He's a good-looking guy. He's a person, but, like. I also don't want to look like Johnny Knoxville. You know what I mean? Like, it's one of those things. Like, one time someone said I look at Pee Wee Herman, and I was just like, that hurt my feelings for a long time. I was just like, I don't <clears throat> I don't like this at all. One time I was at a party, and someone said I look like McLo- McLovin. And that was right after uh, my, like, big ex before Voldemort broke up with me. Or, like, before, you know, and I was just like. My- so you were already at, like, an all-time low. Yep. And they I was were just, just like, like, this is the worst day of my life, which is a huge insult to uh, Christopher Mintz Plaza or whatever. But, like, I, he's a fine-looking dude. I just don't want to look like other people. And well, because, like, he, Christopher Mintz Plaza looks like he does normally, and it's not McLovin, you know. But people, yes. like, conf- referring to you to a character that is intentionally made to look as nerdy as possible. Yeah, yeah and I was and just, like, just- Shut, 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 shut your mouth shut, shut up and yeah so I, it's weird to be told that you look like people like you know you get like i mean people always like compare you to thor and stuff because of your hair and it's just like oh cool. i'm like i just ride that wave because like i'm nowhere near chris hemsworth level but you know what that yeah, is a he's great down sl- here you're up here this is- <laughs> <laughs> that's what we're doing this but is like i will oh, take for, for audio only listeners my hand when i'm talking about chris hemsworth is below where the camera can see me and when i'm talking about steven it's above where the camera can see me that's that's the, the difference in, in just attractivity attractivity indeed yeah dude so i mean people want to update on that that's really what i've been doing this week is spending a lot of time with her writing a song and also steven i've been dealing with so i haven't had i haven't been having a really great time on social media lately uh for numerous reasons you know a lot of people i a lot of people are probably going through similar things for for various reasons you know like it's just like twitter in general hasn't been as much fun there's a lot of like nonsense kind of like this manufactured drama that's kind of being thrust upon us just like it's kind of similar to like how it is every uh election year you know or it's just like there's always like this overwhelming like there's this burdenous cloud you know this gloom that like just lingers no matter what you do you feel like you're either like 
I don't know if you, if you don't pay attention to it, you you're burying your head in the sand like an ostrich, and people like you know just like shake their fisty for that. And if you do pay attention to it, you just become a, a ball of depression and want to you know delete your life. You know, like that's you know like that's. So lately, I haven't been having the best time. So what I've been trying to do is like kind of curate more. I've been trying to like I'm actively just like look, I'm not gonna click on anything I know is gonna upset me. I'm not gonna do anything. Like I like I'm only gonna pay attention to the people I like. I'm only gonna pay attention to people like I like I know that I can like harmonize with in some way. Like I, I get along with, they're my people. This is my, my colony, you know, what you, but Steven, I saw something and like, I, I saw someone post something about how, about Ferris Bueller. <clears throat> uh oh. And it was a post where he said, um, he, he said, he was like, this isn't my original thought, but I agree with it. And he was like, Cameron from Ferris Bueller is the uh, villain of the movie. And I was just like, no, why? And I looked at his reasoning and his reasoning is uh, or the reasoning of the show, which is called uh, You're the Worst. Which I'm, and I've heard it's a really good show. And I'm, I'm sure I'd love the show itself and the characters and in context, the conversation that they have about this movie, because I don't care if I agree with the conversation about a movie. But what I do care about is if someone argues for the point, if it's super wrong and it, it just like it like grinds my gears a little bit. Um, so in the show, they Ro Rooney is obviously the villain of that movie. Like, I mean. He, he's the very clear cut, like Hollywood yeah. villain. I mean, that's like what I mean. Anyways, <clears throat> so in real life, too, by the way. But oh, yeah. I mean, there. <laughs> yeah, that's very. <laughs> um, but there I mean, there are there are a couple there. There are, you know, multiple mini bosses and villains within the story. Um, Cameron is none of them, though. That's the thing is. Uh, so his point or the point they make in the show that he was trying to reinforce or, you know, take, you know, say that he agreed with. Um was that Cameron was a, a boring person who wanted to stand in the way of fun and didn't want to do anything. And Ferris wanted to have the best day. And it, like Cameron was like basically a poopy pants. Um, and that made him a villain to the story. I Now, the reason this pissed me off, now, like the reason this pissed me off, aside from, so aside from the fact that it's just wrong. Now here, I'll, I'll just like very quickly, just to, like the hero of Ferris Bueller's Day Off is literally Cameron. <laughs> like Cameron is the hero of Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Um, the movie starts learning about, you know what? One of our favorite Disney movies, Steven, is very much like Aladdin, okay? The movie starts with the magical character introducing the world. It starts with the genie, right? Although he's disguised, it starts with the genie introducing the world as we see it. And then we see our hero in his normal everyday life. It's the basic ass hero's journey, right? So we start off, we learn a little bit about the world, but then we're thrust into the hero's life where he's, <clears throat> he's stuck in a rut of nothingness he, he he has things he needs he has things he has to learn he has things he has to do and he's not wanting to do them he gets a literal call to adventure a joseph campbellian very simple call to adventure and he refuses the call also very simple call to adventure like the storytelling 101 cameron is the fucking hero of the story um mm -hmm. he accepts the call to adventure takes on he he goes with his guide who is a, a mystical representation who's going to show him you know uh the the various ways of the world who's going to assist him through his journey and give him these things that he needs you know like the confidence that he needs and the perspective that he needs in order to grow and overcome the fear of like do, you know his father and what he and just become what he has to be Cameron is the hero of the story. He he clearly has an arc. He goes through a whole thing. He had like he falls. He even falls into the water. Has a whole realization. It's a whole belly of the whale moment where it's like the um. It's 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 just it's so obvious that he is absolutely like, though. Like not only that, but it's actually kind of like a unique perspective on seeing like the hero in third. Not yes. third person, but like an altered perspective of yeah, absolutely the main character. Basically, that's that's, that's a pretty I've, cool. It's really, I but it's that. absolutely true because Ferris. If you think about Ferris as the main character, literally learns nothing, yes. doesn't change anything about himself, doesn't do anything. He literally is the fourth, the wall breaking narrator. Yes. Is what he is. That's he's not the he's not he's not the character of the story. You know what I'm saying? Like, exactly. He's a character within it, but that's exactly. Crazy. And it's just like. So, and it's fun. And like, I think that's what really pissed me off is like, so he posed this idea <clears throat> and he referenced this, this show and he's like, I agree with this. So I basically gave like a quick pitch of what I just said, where it's like, oh, I'm pretty sure like, like to me, it's it very structurally sound that Cameron is this hero. Uh, Ferris is this assistant. Like, you know, I was just like, Rooney is clearly um, a, a villain. There, there are other villains, but I was like, I think the real villain is um, like, 
societal pressures, structures, mm-hmm. you know, that you, you know, are being reinforced about or, you know, enforced upon you. Um, <clears throat> but there are all these different things. And it's, it's a, it's a, an awesome conversation to have. It's so much fun to, to think about it as a writer, um, as a viewer, as, as a, you know, just like a, a people who embrace narratives every day. It's I, like, I love it. I, and like you said, like, it's a unique perspective to like enter a story, you know, like I love that mm-hmm. idea. And it's just like, it opens up an opportunity for writers and like people to be like, Hey, look at like what we're doing, you know? Um, not to mention there are all kinds of like fun, uh, things like, like, uh, fun theories of about Ferris Bueller, like the whole Fight Club theory is like, it was Ferris Bueller ever real? Um, was you know, like, was it a fight? Club True situation? that. And, you know, like, like there's so many fun things you can do, but the least fun thing you can do is say that Cameron's the villain, and then when someone poses uh, any argument against it, um, to just ignore it and then continue to say, "I agree with this show. I agree with this show," over and over and over. Regard like despite like all of the evidence to the contrary, it just made me so mad to see that that I blocked the person. I blocked them. Steven. I'm usually <laughs> Stephen. I'm not usually that petty. Like I will, especially because I I like I like the, the the person. Otherwise, I was like, look, I liked you literally up until I saw you doing that, and not even because you have the opinion that he's the villain, but that you you said that and didn't even like take into consideration any other perspective and then like continued to persist. And you know what it was that really bothered me about it was it was a literal shit post. And like, it's a literal like trying to be controversial and upsetting people for the sake of getting engagement. And I was like, you no longer get my engagement. I don't mm-hmm. care. Like, I'm you're, not gonna, I'm not- You're gone. You're gone. And like, I don't- Good care. day, sir. You get nothing. (laughs) But so that just like, I don't I love I don't love um, falling into that like pettiness level of like, I'm going to block you if you don't. But I also I need to just curate my social media engagement. And that's just part of it. If it like if you are the type of person who's going to put that stuff out there, I don't need that negativity in my life, to be honest with you. I'm trying really hard like to build community, to you know, like get indie books out there, promote indie books and like indie writers and indie artists and do what we can to freaking like just help each other as much as possible. I don't need you to tell me that Karen's the villain. How dare you? Okay. How dare and, the, you? Yeah, and the frog brothers are basically the villain of the Lost Boys oh. franchise because you know. <laughs> Oh, I mean, if you think about it, they broke into someone's house while they were sleeping and murdered them. Yeah. So, I mean, really, I mean like, the revenge is going to be like, no, we're the. <laughs> ah! um, okay, but Steven, speaking of, uh, speaking of building a community and trying to promote things that are positive and good and helpful in the world. So, speaking of, you know, trying to boost people, help people promote people and you know positivity there's a new event that's happening on twitter and instagram and you know all over for readers and writers alike to kind of come together it's called read gala you can go check it out it's it's just an opportunity for people it's like they they have a lot of these cool pitch events happen on twitter where writers can find agents and writers can find like publishers and that kind of stuff this one is specifically for readers to find books that actually sound good it's like it's like a, the opportunity to have like a dating app for for books you know it's swipe, just like, swipe left or right baby that's right yeah so so like it, it what it is i think it's it's gonna happen on the 25th uh you know so check it out we'll post all the links below um but but if you're a writer and you have a book that you've published you go on there uh go on twitter you can write you know just send a tweet with hashtag read gala and readers have the opportunity to go and like your book and you can send them the link or whatever you know and you have the opportunity for readers to find books and writers to find readers and it's it's just a good opportunity you know a good chance for everyone to to find a um you know just new things to read and new ways to get their work you know their book out there so i think it's fun it's a cool way to kind of build the community and keep it going so i you know i'm all about it so go check the links below and uh you know participate however you can steven so we also since you know let's keep it going with like trying to like help people and like get the the community going and share you know with one another however we can uh let's do like a quick like questions from the colony can you get you hit me with that sweet sweet questions from the colony the 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 og theme itself written back in 88 uh so good it's the questions from the colony we worship an ostrich god named kuakla or something like that don't say his name three times because it's questions from the colony Ooh, steve Ooh, my goosebumps have goosebumps <laughs> like mm, every time um so 
every you know every so often we get questions from people who watch our show or you know just just or interact with us on twitter and they want to know something you know based on like either what we do or you know the, from the experience we've had you know they don't, or they just want to ask us silly questions and see how we respond this time this time steven we were asked uh angela wants to know she wants to start a youtube channel and she wants to start making more you know content and get out there and you know just kind of like uh, start making things similar to what we're making, but probably better, probably more polished, probably, you know, more, 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 more uh, friendly to the the audiences out there, the general audiences. But what she wants to know is she's, she complimented us and she said that we're, you know, pretty authentic. We're usually like, you know, we seem to just be ourselves all the time. Um, and she's like, how is that working out? <laughs> you know, but she wants to know, like, you know, like, do, do we have any advice for like, doing that or doing a version of that that can be better um <laughs> or, and can, she we wants, can we create the thing that that overtakes us yes yeah, um, yeah she wants to know she wants she's like how can i i want to she wants to have more issues she has better issues no no okay. but like good. but like she wants no but she wants to make something um that's that's you know a show just just you know she wants to know how to get out there she's never been on camera before and she wants to know oh, like if we've always been comfortable doing this or if we have any advice as to how someone could find that comfort level and like move forward with that sort of thing so what do you think so from my perspective on this situation is it would be difficult for me maybe not so much you but it would definitely be difficult for me if I was just talking to people like solo. Um, however, I mean, like I'm pretty good. Like I, on the lives I've done on TikTok and stuff, like I'm pretty good at just like navigating conversation, but I feel like the magic or whatever that people see when they watch us and the authenticity yeah. is because literally people, this is exactly like if Anthony and I got together every week in person, this is exactly how we would talk to one another. Anyway, this is this is what our friendship has always been. We would just discuss crazier things, crazy things and like suggestions and just try to figure out how to like these do these things. So since Anthony and I live, which is only 30 minutes away, but in, in when you're in your 30s, 30 unacceptable. minutes, <laughs> it's an unacceptable distance. Like it's, I, have, I won't walk 500. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> my back. My nope. Friend. Yep. We're just too, life is too busy. So like this podcast is actually, you're, you're real. it's really just capturing like us getting together once a week and, and catching up with one another, you know, with some like, like idea and structure behind it. Yeah. Um, so like, it depends on what I guess her, you know, your programming is going to be. Um, yeah. I find it's definitely easier to have like someone to bounce things off of because you also, you never know what that person's going to say in response. And it could, you know, completely like drive this idea home in a Skittle different nipples. way. Yeah. What? I said Skittle nipples, Steven. No, yeah. yeah. See, were you yeah. expecting, were you expecting to taste that rainbow? I don't think you were. <laughs> you were. Nobody expected that one. <laughs> what would the milk be? It would just be like this, all oh. the different flavors. Would it be? You know what the milk would be? The milk would be fruity pebble milk is what it would be. Even Steven, I said recently <laughs> on Twitter, I was like, I want, I was like, it's simple. I just want my coffee to taste like cereal milk. I want my cereal to taste how like have, cereal. How, how have they not come up with like flavored syrups? Well, like well, like they, chocolates. They, they have I them. They, I mean, they have creamers. They have, I mean, that's what I do. I, I like, yeah, I, but no, 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 no. I need like a Hershey's brand oh, fruity pebble. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, I I want to <laughs> grab a glass of milk and squeeze the essence of fruity pebbles into my milk. I don't Specifically. want to eat the cereal. I'm not wasting that much cereal. Who like I'm not a monster. I just want the milk. I want that sweet, sweet juice. And you know what? And and for it to be truly authentic, the cap the Captain Crunch syrup better fuck up my mouth. Okay. It better somehow rip the roof of my mouth up still. I don't know how it's gonna do it in syrup form, but glass we'll find a I way mean, that's adapted for a reason, Steve. <laughs> But, and I believe I believe his catchphrase is, you know, me and the cap making it happen. So he's going to he's going to he's going to do he's it. Gonna fuck up your mouth. Just like you said, Stephen. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so I think Stephen, by the way, all that was from Skitt Skittle nipples, though. I mean, that's just a good example of like being able to yes. like but that's but that's exactly to, to your point is <clears throat> it, it is a lot easier for us to just have a conversation. And like, I think, unfortunately, the reason Steve and I haven't uh, met a level of success that a lot of other YouTubers uh, will will meet is because we are more uh, kind of loose with that. And I, you know, we allow tangents and ridiculousness and skittle nipples and all this stuff. Mm. Um, I'll tell you that, like, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you exactly how I get through it as someone who probably has similar issues that, as you, because, um, you know, Steve and I have never 
wanted to be on camera. Like, like I've always been a person who's written who wanted to film other people. You know, like I never really wanted to do this. But like, like, like we were saying, it is it's become our conversation. And then through that, it's become our way of keeping each other accountable through our, you know, um, for our comic books and such. So it helps to do this. And it also, of course, works as well. Uh, to it, it facilitates, you know, an audience that will hopefully read our books and, you know, show mm -hmm. up for, for our projects and such. Um, if you don't have someone to bounce ideas off of, I think you could still do the thing that we do or, you know, that I do is every week I write, you know, I outline exactly what our episodes are about so like this one in particular i'll say it says intro how do we do life updates uh crush coheed uh, you know because i knew i was gonna talk about my crush i knew steven was gonna talk about coheed um i wrote ferris bueller slash you're the worst uh then i wrote reed gala now we're at questions from the day and like you know so i just like i did uh, like chapter outlines of everything the same way you would if you were writing a story or writing anything else you just do slugs and then you'll know, go from there but I also know that I'm the one who edits this so I can say skittle nipples. And if I want to cut it out, I will, you know, uh, but I don't, I don't have to, you know, so it's, it's fun to do that. Um, if you're going live, it's, it might be better to have a strong structure or whatever. So she mentioned in her, her message to me that she was kind of letting uh, the fear of imperfection and like the, the, the thought of like, she wants her idea to be fully, you know, um, curated. Which, but which is kind of like where we were at one point, but this, this idea yeah. and what we're doing now is actually the polar opposite of that. Yes. It was, literally like not fake it till you make it but basically uh practice is progress and yep. like we we're just gonna go for it because yep. that's the best way to learn is to just go for it and then correct when you're people aren't gonna put you on this stage and judge you for your failures you know what i'm no. saying like, and it's I, I i think like there I, there are different um form formats and formulas for videos and that sort of thing and like yes it can help depending on your video type to be extremely polished as well as you can and do what you can to put your best foot forward um, but that being said, no matter what you do, it's still going to be drafts on drafts on drafts. You know, it's just like writing or drawing or anything else. You're doing your pencil sketch, then you ink it, you color, you know, you do the thing just like writing. You do your first draft or, or you outline it. Then you do your first draft, which is just recording live or, you know, recording like just the raw footage on the camera, however it may be with all your like burps and ums and nonsense. And then, you know, you'd go from there with your second draft or you edit it and you actually make it more cohesive. And then, you know, you go further than that and you try to like cut out for time time and for you know content and such um but it's just like being precious with the idea before it actually exists is always going to stop you it's like the whole like david foster wallace like talked about like permanities and like this whole idea of like uh you can't know what a thing is until it exists so you might as well make it and you know so then once it exists you can see it and like help formulate it and like carve it and like you know manipulate it in such a way but before that you're just going to hold yourself back because you know like the fear of perfection or imperfection makes you slow it's like quicksand that you get stuck in mm -hmm. it's a trap you know so it's much better to just move forward because you're always going to you're always going to be a little bit better as so long as you're trying to be a little bit better you know and I, and I feel like the internet as a whole has kind of created this whole mentality because like yeah. and i've brought this up before but like as someone who has avidly played uh video games since the 90s the 80s um, watching the shift in how people consume and play video games, like especially once online internet hit, like metas, like words like meta became relevant. Like people won't like won't even play with you if you're playing a certain character in a game because it's not meta relevant. The the the, the yeah. best the top echelon people don't use this character, so why mm. would I even play with you if oh, you're yeah. using a bot? It's crazy. It is. And like, but but it, it it translates to like almost everything in life. Like, yeah. but like the truth of the matter is, is the people that found those those characters that were good anyway decided to go against the grain, and yeah. all the people that follow those people, of course, just are sheep, and they follow what the meta. You can create a meta. You can yeah. be the person that finds it. You know 100%, what I'm saying? Like, dude. yes. You don't. It I think we are in like this, we're in this weird place because the, the internet's constantly throwing us all at each other and throwing us all into this weird bucket together. And if you notice like how quickly language evolves, like I'm going to use a word now that I usually would never use and like say aloud. Actually, I can't remember. I don't think I've ever actually said this word uh, ever. But have you noticed? I don't think I have. I'm going to do it. Fuck it. Um, but like, uh, no, but Steven. I'm so nervous. <laughs> I don't think I say anything bad. Like, I mean, it's been not. It's just not me. You know, it's the thing. But it's just a perfect example. Of what I'm saying is like, um, have you noticed late, recently uh, the term "serving cunt" on on social media? Have you seen that? Uh, so no. okay, so there's a new thing. But it, so there's a new slang, uh, which serving cunt, and it what it means uh, basically is 
oh, look at this, look at this woman or this person um, who's uh, projecting confidence and look at her like she's being like this, like, it's basically like she's yes queening, you know, like she is being like this, like, oh, like amazing, like glowing person. Look, she is serving con, you know, it's this thing. It's a, but it's a saying that's been catching on and more and more people are saying it just casually, much like circle jerking, where it's a thing that people say that makes its way into just the public perception and then the public vernacular and then everyone's just saying it as if it's a casual acceptable thing now i'm not really i'm not making a comment on whether or not those words are acceptable or if there's anything wrong with them what i'm making a real comment on is the fact that our language is all coming together in this weird way where um words are being introduced and like ideas are being introduced and then accepted or rejected by a huge group of people you know at once it's not as it's not as um uh curate it's no, not curated uh, it's 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 not as like segregated as it used to be like you know we used to have clicks like in high school it was just like here are these emo kids and here are these like jocks and here are these nerds and here and then they'd have languages within themselves and we still have languages within various subcultures but if, if you like i've noticed i'll just use my i statements i've noticed that it's not as much like most people are using similar language now even language that comes from <laughs> Even language generational like generational yeah. languages are even more like 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 the the lines are blurring between like because like generationally you used to be able to separate like ages yeah. but now like I mean like because of the internet like people yes. really do just use whatever's yeah. relevant and, and that's know? the thing is like we're creating a language of the internet is the thing and it's like we used to create language of various tribes and various uh, cliques and various cultures and subcultures and stuff you know and like and I'm sure that's still happening of course. But what's also happening is there's a language of the internet and it's the mass of people. So it is like the mass populace of people who are saying things like, like AF and like Abvi and like all of these words that just pop up and bubble up in the cultural consciousness, you know, like everyone's using these words and then they, some of them disappear, some of them don't, you know, whatever. But it's amazing. Um, that being said, you don't have to use any of those words. I'm not going to start walking around saying serving cunt. It's not going to happen. I'll talk to you about it and I will recognize that it's happening and I address it. And like, you know, but it's okay to create your own language because other people will find those words and you can continue to uh, recognize your, you know, little substructures and your colonies and your little bubbles where like the language doesn't work, where your grandma or your grandpa might love saying that thing, but maybe they don't. Maybe they have their own language structure and their own vernacular and their own like fun, like linguistic tree that they are building. And like, you can do that with everything that you do. You don't have to go ahead. And you, and you know what the process of doing that is called? What? Skittle ni skittle nippling is what it's called. You it's can called skid skittle nipple. If you don't, yeah, if you're not. So uh, this episode's been brought to you by skittle nippling. If you want to create your own lexicon, this is all you need is to taste the nipples. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say it too. I was literally like, yeah, oh <laughs> so, but. I think I think most of all there there are I mean I, I don't want to create a false dichotomy. You can do anything. You get like literally if it exists, <laughs> try it. Do do whatever you want. I don't care. Like try your best. Don't hurt people. Try it. See what you can do. But I will say that as I see people uh finding various levels of success it does happen in a few different ways. And I'll tell you just a couple of the ways like very quickly. Uh one of them is finding a niche and recognizing like what your very specific group is, what that lexiconal tree is, like what, where, like, you know, where all those branches are. Like, if you know, if you're like, I'm really interested in horror movies, like what do people really like to talk about here? Like what sort of thing gets attention with horror movies specifically? How can I, you know, focus on that? What are the hashtags and the, you know, whatever, like the interesting like topics here. So you can talk, you can like specific, like be specific to one group. You can also, of course, you can try to do that, but like in a broader sense and be like, Hey, what's the most popular right now? Like are people like all about skittle nipples? Are they doing hashtag skitnip? You know, like what's <laughs> going on? <laughs> you know, um, you can try, you can try that. that I, I feel like that's like a, a harder thing to chase. Cause like everyone's always like a little bit behind trying to be like, Oh, I wrote this column. And it's like, yeah, but no one cares about that. Grandpa, shut up. You know? Um, <laughs> so, and then like the other thing, the thing that I think that Steven and I do, and I think a, a lot of people appreciate and love. And like, I think the reason anyone's made it this far in our show is because of this. And it's just, um, just do the thing that you actually like, like yourself, whatever it is. Like, don't try to chase a niche or don't try yeah. to chase 
the public perspective. Just do the thing that you feel is going to be meaningful for you or fulfill something that you want to do. Um, just like, like, just like find, find one audience member, even if it's yourself and speak to them, you know, just like right now I'm speaking to you. You know, it's like, you know, mm -hmm. you want, you want to, to figure out who you're trying to create something for and just do your best to reach them in the best way that you can, not the best way that you think someone else would. Absolutely. Like you just nailed it. So, okay. So I think we, we pretty much, um, we, you know, we, we covered the, the question. We, we, we talked to, about that one at length, uh, Steven, the last thing we were going to talk about, and we, it's always been on here, not even a little bit joking. It says Skittle nipples, Steven, we got to sell these. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> so, um, okay. But every week and now a word from her sponsor, <laughs> no, word from our sponsor, Previously on Skittle Nipples. Wait, it's a show now? I can't believe that I'm the red nipple. It's so predictable. Yeah, I wish you were the purple nipple. So do I, Mom. <laughs> why, why can't Is you it more like your brother? So Skittle Nipples, though, like they're just Skittles, but then the, the center of the Skittle is like a nipple off of the Skittle. Steven, you got to watch the find out. Yeah. <laughs> Last time on Skittle Nipple Z. Oh. <laughs> oh my god, he just transformed into a sour Skittle Nipple. <laughs> so, <laughs> so uh, that's how it happens, everyone. Um, okay, so every week, every week we we bookend the show talking about what we want to do um, and what we're trying to do. And really we, we get a little more uh, serious about our, our plans, you know? So Simon, we're, we're coming close. We're starting to get closer to, we're starting to get closer to when we're, we, we're supposed to be done with this book. Uh, what are you going to do this week? How are you going to help? I'm going to smash through some pages. I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm not positive, but I'm pretty sure I actually get the three day weekend coming up. So I get, I get Saturday, Sunday, Monday, I'm almost positive. Yeah, dude. And I have taken like a month off of, of church. So I don't have to, like get up and play. So like I should have extra time to get Damn. some. I, 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 I literally took, sorry, God, this, sorry, comic God. Is more, this comic is a little bit more important than your son. No, wait, <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't mean that at all. I didn't mean that at all. I didn't mean, Jesus. No. <laughs> um, that was him. Not me. I did not say anything. I'm just joking. But no, like <laughs> it was more or less, it was more or less just like a juggling. Like it's everything's been a juggling act in my life. So I, I just was, tr I'm trying to like get this done. So, um, but yeah, I have three days this weekend. So I'm going to try to barrel through because I believe I'm on 14, right? I've sent, yeah, I think yeah. I've sent up to 13. So, I mean, we're really, we're really hella close. I mean, oh, the, yeah. the, sh the showdown is happening. I mean, I'm, I'm mere pages away from your brilliant rename of Brian. So like, yeah, I want to get some pages done. So I want to get two pages, two or three pages done this week is my goal. Oh, yes, dude. Um, I, This week, Atlas goes with his mom. It's it's going to be my like super active week. I also want to stay. I, so I started a new channel. I haven't done anything with it yet, but like I created it because I want to post like longer horror movie things on there. And then this is my plan. This is my plan, Stephen. I'm going to say this here for anyone else who's who's trying to create channels. I'm going to try. So I'm literally going to put in action the thing that I was just talking about. So what I'm doing is here is where I get to just be myself and talk to you. And we're doing this whole thing. I'm going to try the niche thing and do horror movies and bad movies and specifically make short videos to try to get like the biggest audience I can get and funnel them back to us is my plan. <laughs> that's my plan so fall in love with the face that's my plan I'm, I'm gonna i'm gonna make short videos make like horror movie stuff uh follow the niche because it's something i love and so i can do both like that's what i'm trying to do both where i'm like i'm following a niche that's something that's meaningful to me and that i do but you don't feel like you're discounting what we've built exactly you know? and then and then what i'm doing is i'm just going to funnel it back this way and then you know like of course and, and i'm hoping it's one of those things where it's just like what do they call it? Like a lateral integration where it's like, you know, this keeps growing and this keeps, it's like the comic book and the podcast and the, other, you know, the channels and the, you know, I just want everything to keep feeding itself. So we keep building this cool ladder up the, you know, up this hill together. Um, so I'm going to film, I'm going to film a couple of like horror movie videos uh, because of, that way I can talk, talk at length and like say like stupid things and don't, you know, don't have to like drag our, our show down for half an hour. <laughs> because i'll ramble i'm gonna ramble about this crap but i'm really going to color i'm gonna try to color two pages at least i want to catch up that's my that's my goal my goal is to just be caught up so i can like start lettering again or like you know like go mm. back to lettering 
but I want to just catch up. So I'm going to use the next like two days where I have just time to myself. To yeah, the, I, I imagine because like as long as these pages take for me to draw means that the flats are going to take for freaking ever yes. too. Like, I, dude, there's so much. You, you got you have some you do have some pages coming up where I've I've been more focused on like showing the fighting. Sure. So you're going to have some sweet gradients you can just throw oh, behind. Man, that stuff like I mean for both of us, like yeah, it's, like it's so much easier. You know, like when there's a scene and it's just like two subjects fighting, and I'm like, oh yes, I just get to color these two, and it's so like, and then the back is nothing oh like it's just there's so much detail on a page and like i want i i love it it's my my favorite thing is like you've been you've been doing an amazing job with these books i'm not i'm not complaining i'll color anything i'll do i'm doing yeah. I'm my, like, but I'm, it, dude like i was even, like as i'm drawing like as i'm drawing the arcade cabinets on a picture of brian that's like this small yeah. on the page i'm like yeah. man anthony's gonna hate coloring these cabinets yeah, like, that's what it yeah that's what it's been it's just you know it, it's been a whole process but it's 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 cool dude and it feels really good i love that it's just us doing the book though you know like i don't like there's a part of me that every once in a while i think like hey or what if like we're gonna get to this place where like we just pay someone to color or pay someone to, but like i just want the time if i have the time and i if i didn't have to go to work i'd love to just flat color you know like it like i, I wish this could just be my job because i like that it's just us doing it it's my favorite mm. thing is just like this is the thing that we're no doing. one else's names even are are yeah. required to be put on this at all yeah it's just a tony banana hands production you know start to finish i love it it's my like i freaking love it it feels like it's it's such an important thing that we're doing together and we've been working on this for you know, almost three years now which is crazy to think about like what is it, like august i think we, like yeah is our three-year anniversary um I'll, I'll find out the date and we'll we'll do something um but anyway, so that's what we're doing this week. Uh, let us know what you're doing this week. Let us know like what you thought of the show. If you have any questions for us, check us out on uh, Twitter or Facebook. You know, all the links are down below. You can also just comment down below and we will answer your questions in an upcoming episode. Stephen, what do you want to say to the people before we go? I love you guys. You guys are incredible. I love Coheed more, but I do love you guys like a lot. I like love you guys very much so. And okay. I hope you guys have wonderful weeks. I hope you all have a wonderful week. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for listening. Um, we appreciate you and we love you. And we're glad you made it this far. Thank you for being a part of our community and our colony. Uh, check out the Reed Gala. Um, tell me that you think that Cameron's the hero of Ferris Bueller. I don't want to hear otherwise. If you say otherwise, I'll freaking block you. I don't care. I'm not interested. Not interested. Your, your version's the best, but like at worst, at worst, Cameron is a reluctant Sam Wise. Like at go. worst, That's, at worst, dude. There's so many fun conversations with Ferris Bueller. Like John Hughes was a genius. There's so yeah. much you can do dude, with every all movie, of these movies. Every movie dude. is a, it's oops all hits. Stephen, yeah, he's it amazing, is. and not just amazing. Like all of his movies can be picked apart in fun ways that where you can have fun conversations endlessly. And the way you don't do that is by trying to be a dick. OK, just 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 eat the Skittle nipples, have fun, support your <laughs> friends. Don't be a jerk um, and love each other. We love you. We appreciate you. We'll see you next week. I'm Anthony. And I'm Stevie. I'm Stevie Walker. <laughs> what were you going to say, Steven? <laughs> I'm Stevie Skittle nipples. I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to stick. It's going. It's going. To the... We'll see you next time. Love you guys. Bye. Boom. All right. Um, All right, dude. I... Get on nipples. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Like you literally said something as random as possible, and it just it, that's 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 just how that that's how it works. I knew I knew it. That's how Stevie Wildcard happened. I mean, that's just how it yeah. happens. You, that's, it just it happens. Those are the best moments, and that's like I think that's the thing. Is people are gonna watch this episode and be like, "Oh, the Skittle nipples episode." Of course. Yep. <laughs> Whatever. It's it's a thing now. It's a thing. It had to be. All right, dude, I love you. I'm going to go edit this. Yep. Have fun, brother. Right, I will see you soon. All right. See you, kids. <laughs> see you, kids. <laughs> Sexual. <laughs> wait, wait. I could keep that in, right? Is that a, like... I think so, because I feel like we immediately explained, like, yeah. I definitely didn't yeah. mean that. All right, I'll keep that whole explanation. I just, as long as you're... We're, we're, the, we're the first two arrested in Florida for doing it. Like, like that like, like that <laughs> whole act that got passed, like... <laughs> 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 All right, dude. I love you. Love you, too, dude. Bye. Bye.